Crocodile is easily my favorite crocodile Pokemon, so I just had to make it into a lethal sweeper to plow through teams online. My name is Just Weavile, and welcome to my Pokemon Wi-Fi Battle series, where we try to bring out the potential of every Pokemon there is. Let's get started. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Cody. So they're going to lead off with Great Tusk. As I led off with my Glimora. Now, this is actually a pretty decent lead. Obviously, type advantage wise, they got me. But we could have Energy Ball. You never know. We could have Energy Ball. So, what I'll do here is they're probably going to switch out expecting an Energy Ball into, I would say, Dusknaw or Corviknight. So, if the, either way, I think we should go into Radiant. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We need to be careful here. We need to be careful. So, I might just go straight for an Earth Power, see what they're going to do, or a Stealth Rocks. Um, or a mortal spin to poison them. I'll go for an earth power, just get some damage off. They actually go for an EQ, which is fine. It's going to take us down to our sash and get the toxic debris up, which is awesome. And then we get a free earth power off on them and we get to see what kind of set they are. Because they could be an assault vest set. We'll see how, well, based on how much earth power does. So earth power comes through and it does no damage. We are a fully offensive Glimora. That has got to be assault vest or specially defensive of some kind. So now what we'll do is we'll go Corviknight. We'll punish it for going for Rapid Spin to get rid of the Toxic Debris. Um, if they go for Rapid Spin, they might go for another EQ. They probably go for a Rapid Spin though. So Corviknight comes in. They go for a Rapid Spin, which is going to do no damage to us, obviously. Um, but it does give them some Rocky Helmet shit, which is great. It does get rid of the uh, Toxic Spikes, but it's fine. We can get them back up later by sacking off Glamora. So what we'll do now is, I, I'm looking at their team, and I'm thinking they have to go Corviknight here. Let's go for a U-turn real quick. They withdraw the Great Tusk as expected, which is fantastic. Let's see what they're going to do. So they go into Grimmsnarl, which is fine. Grimmsnarl is fine. We go for a U-turn, and we'll go straight back into Glimora, get the Stealth Rocks up, and hopefully they go for a Light Screen, and then we'll go for a Sludge Wave, because it'll still do a lot of damage um, regardless. So let's go Glimora now, like so. Glimora is back in. And uh, like I said, we'll go for a Stealth Rock. There's no real reason not to. Because they go for a Light Screen anyway, which is what I expected. And then what we'll do is we'll go for a Sludge Wave or something like that. So Stealth Rock comes through. Now, they're more than likely going to Parting Shot into Corviknight here. And then Defog. If I had to guess. But they have a Rapid Spin Great Tusk. So would they be Defog? I think I'll play it safe and go straight for the Sludge Wave here because they might just stay in and go for something else. They go for the Reflect. They get the Reflect up. They know they can take a Sludge Wave no problem with Light Screen up. So we go for a Sludge Wave. We get some nice damage off on the Grimmsnarl. Nice damage. Very nice damage. Um, so now we'll go for another Sludge Wave. I don't see any reason not to. They withdraw. So they don't have Parting Shot, which is good to know. And they go into Corviknight, which is to be expected. So that's fine. With the Corviknight in, like I said, they probably go for a Defog. Stealth Rocks do take into effect, which is great. Sludge Wave doesn't work. And now we're going to see if they're leftovers or not. They're not. So if we assume they're going to go for either a U-turn or a Defog here, we should hard switch into Blaziken. They wouldn't go for a Brave Bird here, I don't think, unless they really expected the Blaziken switch. But Blaziken's a bit risky for me, so we're going to the Lecky Rooster. Like so. They go for an Iron Defense, which is fine. It is fine. We should be able to connect a Fire Blast here. So I'm going to go for a Fire Blast. There we go. Fire Blast comes through. We are a special Blaziken, so that Iron Defense means nothing. But it still doesn't KO them. So they must be specially defensive with Weakness Policy. And we lost some of our HP as well. They go for a Roost. Okay. That's fine. So they're going to Roost their health back just to scout to see what we're going to do. I get a Speed Boost. If they have Iron Defense, we can assume their Body Press. Let's go for another Fire Blast and try and connect. They're actually going to Terrastalize. So this is actually not too bad for us. If they Terror into a Water type, it means that Raging Bolt can handle them pretty well. They actually go Fire. Terror Fire Corvanite is really interesting. So let's see what they do here. Hopefully it's just Body Press. We've seen Iron Defense and Roost, so it's got to be Body Press. Fire Blast does no damage though, obviously, um, being a Fire type. We lose some HP from the Life Orb. They then go for a Power Trip. Interesting. Which doesn't get the KO, luckily. But now, they probably go for a Roost, I'd say. Do I need Blaziken for anything else? Probably not looking at the team. So let's go for an Aura Sphere. 
Aura Sphere comes through. No damage, really. We lose some HP, and then they go for a Roost. So, Roost is fine. Roost is fine. What we need to do is we need to get caught. We need to get Crooked Island. I have a feeling that their Iron Defense... I think they're Power Trip only. They've got to have Body Press, though, haven't they? They've got to. Let's go for an Aura Sphere again. Boom. Oh, we get a crit. Nice. That crit is nice. We lose some HP. They go for a body press, which is going to KO us. So that's unfortunate, but at the same time, it is not the end of the world. Because we got that crit, and that crit is going to really matter. Because the light screen has finally wore off. Which means now, we can go into Raging Bolt, and we can just Volt Switch on this, or Dragon Pulse it. So I'm going to go into Raging Bolt now. And because of the light screen wearing off... I said earlier that the Corviknight was specially defensive. I'd forgotten about the light screen, to be honest with you, already. So now I'm going to go for a Taunt first and foremost, just in case it can live a Dragon Pulse. I don't want it to roost off its HP. Taunt comes through. They can't roost the damage off, which is amazing for us. And uh, they can't go for the roost, which is awesome. So I'm, I'm wondering what the best thing to do here is. Um, are we best to go for... I do think Dragon Pulse is the best option. Yeah, 85 base power. So they withdraw Corviknight. Are they going to go Grim Snarl? They go Great Tusk, trying to avoid the electric type attack. That's fair enough. But unfortunately for them, Dragon Pulse should KO the uh, Great Tusk here. So Dragon Pulse comes through. Doesn't get the KO, interestingly enough. And what we can do now is, because they're pretty low on HP, we can get, we can block the Rapid Spin with Rocky Helmet. because but, Oh, and then they withdraw. Interesting. And they go into Cobra of the Distant Path of the Hisuian Typhlosion, right? Yeah. Well, so it would be. Cobra is a guy from the Discord server who really likes Typhlosion. Um, you should definitely join the Discord server, by the way. And also, as always, if you're finding yourself enjoying this video and you want to see more of your favorite Pokemon in action, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. A little late in the video, but it's whatever. So Typhlosion is in. Um, we have got a switch in, being the Alomomola, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because we can't keep Corviknight in against this Hisuian Typhlosion. Even if you're an anti-switcher, you, you got to agree with that, right? Corviknight doesn't want to stay in against that thing. So we'll go Alomomola. They go for a Lava Plume. Interesting. So it's not an Eruption Spam set. And it gets the Burn, which is unfortunate because we have a lot of physical attacks. Play Rough and Flip Turn. But it's not the end of the world. Because what we can do now is, now that we know it's probably not Scarfed, we can go for a Flip Turn here. They go for a Calm Mind. Very interesting. So what we can do now is we can go for a flip turn. And to be honest with you, Crocodile goes pretty hard right now. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Crocodile goes very hard right now. So I'm going to bring Crook in now. Good old bandit. I didn't even know Hisui and Typhlosion got Calm Mind. That's awesome. We're going to Terra Dragon. And we're going to bulk up. Straight away. So we're going to Terrasalize into a Dragon type to resist the Lava Plume. We have to hope and pray we don't get burned by the Lava Plume. There we go. Terra Dragon comes through. And like I said, we have to hope and pray we don't get burned by the Lava Plume. Um, unless they have Will-O-Wisp. But I, we are speed anyway, so they're probably like a, a more defensive Typhlosion, which is interesting, I guess. No, they might be modest. Lava Plume again. We should live that. We don't get burned, right? We don't get burned, which is awesome. So now, we just go for a Scale Shot. And that's going to lower our defense, but it's going to raise our speed. So Scale Shot comes through. We are loaded dice, so it will hit four to five times. Oh, we might need more than that. If we hit five times, it'll KO. Come on. Show me five is the fifth time. Yes! Crocodile's looking real good right now. It's looking real good right now. As we're going to get a defense drop and then a speed boost after we've already got a bulk up, which is fan fantastic. We also get a moxie boost, which is amazing. Grimmsnarl comes in next. They're probably going to want to get that reflect up, which is fair enough. Um, so stones dig into the Grimmsnarl. What we'll do is, because we know they're going to go for a reflect, we should go for another bulk up. Because we will need that extra power. So I'll, they go for a reflect as expected. And uh, we go for another bulk up here. There we go. Bulk up comes through. Taking our defense back to plus one. 
And then we go for an EQ. And there's not really a lot they can do. So Earthquake comes through. Boom. There we go. And there's the Grim Snarl dead as well, which is awesome. So Corviknight's Terrifier, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Great Tusk is nearly dead. Deoxys Speed, we should outspeed. And Dusknaw doesn't want to take a knockoff. So that's great. Great for us. So Shiny Dusknaw comes in nice and shiny. Gotta love it. They frisk our load of dice. That's fine. Probably gonna go for a Shadow Sneak. I'm gonna go straight for a knockoff. Knockoff comes through. And Dusknaw goes down, which is fantastic. So... We've just not out of the way. We've just not out of the way. We're going to get another Moxie boost here. Which is fantastic. Even the Reflect Up, it's not going to help. Deoxys Speed comes in. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. Stealth Frog's digging, breaking a potential Sash. So we're, we're set up perfectly here. All we have to do is go for another knockoff. And I think they might outspeed us still. But we should be able to live any hit from them. Never mind, they have Ice Beam. That doesn't even KO. Doesn't even KO. As down goes Deoxys. Awesome. This Crocodile set is absolutely brilliant. I love Scale Shot as a move. And I love that these like random Pokemon like, like Crocodile have Scale Shot. It's so cool. Great Tusk comes in. This thing goes down, right? Not to Stealth Rocks, but to Earthquake. So what we'll do is we'll Earthquake right now. Earthquake comes through. Boom, boom, pop. Down it goes. And then we just have the Corviknight, which definitely goes down to an Earthquake. Especially when we're at like plus six nearly. <laughs> There's the Corviknight coming back in to meet its uh, maker. There we go. Corviknight is in. It's going to get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is awesome. Because it's a fire type, so it gets more damage. And then we just simply go for a knockoff here. Take them out. And that is a dead Corviknight. So GG Cody, that was a fun one. Really good demonstration of how good this Crocodile set is. It's so powerful. Gotta love it. GG. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Blitzer. So they're going to lead off with Wisp, which is the Frostlass. And I led off with Corviknight. Now Corviknight matches up pretty well against their team. Um, outside of Terra Blast with Terra Fire on the Espeon potentially and stuff like that. So I think I'll lead off with it. We can go for a U-turn. We can break the f Focus Sash on the uh, Frostlass. They actually trick us. Straight up. What are we going to get? A Flame Orb or something like that? Choice Specs. So we're a Choice Specs Corviknight, which is awesome. We're also going to get some Rocky Helmet chip right now after the U-turn. Um, which is unfortunate. So I, I've never seen Trick Frostlass. That's really cool. I actually want to use Frostlass. It's a really cool Pokemon. Definitely want to use it. Um, I forgot it was in the game, to be honest with you. So <laughs> that's a thing. Uh, anyway, let's go into our Blaziken now. Blaziken can definitely handle the uh, Frostlass. No problem. So Blaziken comes in like so. And as always, if you find yourself enjoying the video and you want to see more of your favorite Pokemon in action, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Anyway, looking at their squad, I would say their best switching is going to be Pre-Marina here, so, or Dragonite. So I'm still going to go for the Fire Blast because it's still damage at the end of the day on the Frostlass, which would be nice. Well, it KO the Frostlass if it connects. And they actually stay in as well and go for a Shadow Ball. Fair enough, it's going to do about um, nearly half. If we go for a Fire Blast, that's going to take out the Wisp real quick. And we don't get Rocky Helmet damage, which is nice. And hopefully we don't get Cursed Body, which we don't, of course, because it already fainted. So we lose some HP from the Life Orb, but Blaziken gets a KO, which is absolutely awesome. All right, Quatus comes in, the Unrivaled, which is going to be the Primarina. So good stuff. This thing could be Specs. So I'm going to Protect and Scout to see what it's going to do. So we go for a Protect. That's going to stop any moves from hitting us, pretty much. Unless they have, like, I don't know, Faint. Which they don't. They go for a Hyper Voice, so they must be a Liquid Voice set, which is interesting. So now that we know they've got a Sound-based move as well, um, we get the Speed Boost, so we outspeed. We obviously outspeed anyway, because it's a Supreme Arena. Um, now we know they're going to go for a Hyper Voice. Let's go into a Loma Molo. It's our best switch into Hyper Voice, really. So we draw Blaziken. We're going to go into our Loma Molola. I can't even say it sometimes. Sometimes I can't say Loma Molola. <laughs> Loma Molo. Loma Molo. They go for a Moomba, so they aren't Specs, which is good. That does a crit, which is going to do loads of damage. Um, so we're going to have to get out of here. We'll go for a flip turn. Um, we actually outspeed the Primarina, showing me that it's a more bulky set. Because normally, um, a lot of Primarinas carry investments though, uh, in speed. So this could be an Assault Vest variant, to be honest with you. So uh, what we'll do now is, because we know they're going to go for a Moonblast again, we should go into Corviknight. Corviknight's not doing too much this game, being choice specs. So we'll go into Corviknight now, like so. Um, they go for an Energy Ball, which would have definitely done a lot of damage to Aloma Mola. I could have Miracoted, really. I didn't think they would stay in, though. 
Um, but looking at this matchup, I'd say we just go straight for a Brave Bird to get some damage off on the Pre Marina because the physical defense is not that great. As that does a nice chunk of damage, which is always welcome. Um, they go for a Hyper Voice there. That's going to take us out. Oh, it doesn't take us out. Never mind. We go for another Brave Bird. We get there. We get a nearly a KO on the Pre Marina, which is great. So they actually have Aqua Jet, which doesn't get the KO. It leaves us on two. That's awesome. Brave Bird comes through and then doesn't get the KO on the Pre Marina. Leaves that on about two. And then we go down to Recall, which is unfortunate. Gonna go into big Crocodile right now because Crocodile really doesn't care about this Pre Marina. And we just get to go for a knockoff real quick, which will definitely KO the Pre Marina and give us a Moxie boost, which would be fantastic. All right, they withdraw the Pre Marina. What's gonna get knocked off? What is gonna get knocked off? That is the real question. Liko's Meow Scarada, that's pretty cool. And that comes in. We get to knock off its item. It could be Choice Scarf, so that's going to be great. Knockoff comes through. Knocking off their Choice Band, which is awesome. Now all we need to do is Terror Dragon, because we're going to go for a Flower Trick or a U-Turn. And we just go for a Scale Shot pretty quick. So we'll Terror Dragon real quick now. And Crookenal should be able to go from here. If we get the Scale Shot off, we outspeed everything on the team. Unless the Choice Scarf Espeon or something, but I doubt it. Um, so we Terror Dragon. If they go for a Triple Axel here, I'm going to be really annoyed. But at the same time... It is what it is. So they go for a flower trick, which is great. I figured they'd probably go for a flower trick. Um, so flower trick comes through. It's going to be a crit, obviously, but it shouldn't do too much damage as we eat that like it's nothing. Um, it was a, <laughs> that, 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 you know, that's a crit. <laughs> it didn't do no damage. So scale shot comes through, and that should KO the Meowth Garada from here as long as we hit at least four times, which we will load the dice. We might need, oh, no, no, four times will do it. I was going to say we might need five times, but four times seems to have been the trick. So now we're going to get a speed boost, a defense drop, and an attack boost from Moxie. So we are set up and ready to go right now. So that is awesome. So we hit four times. Meow Scarada faints. Lowering our defenses, but boosting our speed. So we've got to consider the fact that they haven't terrored yet as well. Pre Marina, I'm not worried about because there's nothing it can terror into to stop it from dying to a knockoff. Espeon might terror Fairy. Which would be unfortunate. And Dragonite could tear a normal extreme speed us, which would be horrible. Alright, Mist comes in. Who's Mist? Espeon. This thing's gonna terror. We know it's gonna terror. They're gonna expect a knockoff and they're gonna go for a Terra Fairy. They do terror. Okay, so that's awesome. So hopefully we see Terra Fairy here, because we should still KO with Earthquake unless they're sashed. Should. Big should. Fairy. Okay, so fairies, uh, they would have lived the knockoff if we'd have gone for knockoff, but obviously we went for Earthquake, so this works out really nicely for us. As uh, we go for an EQ instead, that's going to definitely KO the Espeon unless it's Sash, like I said. Which they are Sash. No, they're not. They just lived on 1 HP. That's annoying. As down we go. So Crocodile didn't unfortunately get to pop off as much as I wanted it to, but it did severely weaken the Espeon and took out the Miascarada. So you know what? Yeah, he's just putting the Discord server. Sashes are overrated. <laughs> it's a leftovers. How did it live that on one HP? It's a plus one earthquake from a crocodile. Like, what is going on? What is going on right now? So anyway, um, let's see what we can do here. I'm, I'm leaning towards a Lomomola. I think I will go a Lomomola because A, this thing's on one HP. Pre is on one HP. Flip turn hurts the tre uh, iron treasure. They kind of have to go into the Dragonite right now. So let's go for a flip turn now. They withdraw. Okay, that's fine. What are they going to go into? The Dragonite, probably. Dragonite would make sense. The Quatus that comes in, though, that is the Pre Marina, right? Yeah, Pre Marina comes in. They're going to sack that off to a flip turn. As that comes through and KOs the Pre Marina, which is awesome. So flip turn KOs the Pre Marina. Got back down. And now we've just got Iron Treads, Espeon, and Dragonite. Espeon being on 1 HP or 2 HP or something like that. So um, now we can just go into. I'm, I'm leaning those Blades to kid now. I think towards Glimora. Glimora does a lot of damage to the whole team, so I'm gonna go into Petunia now. Like so. Nice and shiny, you gotta love it. And they're gonna have to go into Dragonite, I think, here, or Iron Treads. If the Iron Treads is Air Balloon, they can go into that freely. Iron Treads comes in, so that is, that is fair enough. So they're probably Air Balloon on that thing. They're not. So we could go for an Earth Power here, because we're gonna live with the Focus Ash. Kinda wanna keep the Focus Ash intact, though. So what I might do is, I might go into, if because if they're going to go for an Earth, we, they might go for a Stealth Rocks, um, to be fair, because we can't touch them. We can Earth Power them, but we can't stay in. So I think I'll go into Aloma Mola again. Aloma, 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 Aloma Mola is definitely my best switch into um, Espeon, definitely best switch into Titan Treads, and the Dragonite. It's, it's, a good, it's a good Pokemon. It's a really good Pokemon. Really good um, wall. They do go for a Stealth Rock, so I could have brought Blaziken in and got a Speed Boost. But you know what? It's fine. 
Uh, what we'll do instead is we'll go for a Scold. Scold will do a lot of damage to the... Well, they'll do a bit of damage to the Iron Treads and can potentially burn it. They go for a knockoff, knocking off our Assault Vest, which is a really good play because now the Espeon can do some serious damage to us. And um, we go for a Scold, though. That is going to do a nice chunk of damage to the Iron Treads. And no burn, which is unfortunate. So now I'm just going to go for the Scold so they can't bring that Espeon in. As they go for an EQ, which is going to sting a little bit, but not too much as we go for another Scold. Burning them, hopefully. No burn. Let's go for another Scold. They can't really switch Dragonite in because it might burn. And they can't switch Espeon in because it will die. They go for another EQ. That's fair enough. The EQ comes through. We go for a Skull. That's going to take out the Iron Treads, which is fantastic. So with the Iron Treads gone, Aloma Mola putting in the work right now. What we'll have to do is we'll have to switch out the Aloma Mola. Lola. <laughs> Mist comes in. That's going to be the Espeon. So Mist is the Espeon. Um, we know we can't live a hit from this thing, but we can live a hit um, with something else. So let's go into Blaziken now and just sack it off because they're probably going to go for an Alluring Voice, which will definitely KO Blaziken. It'll definitely KO Aloma Mola. So we withdraw Aloma Mola now. And we're going to go into the good old Blaziken, the Lecky Rooster. There we go. And we get some Stealth Rocks digging, which is unfortunate. And then the Alluring Voice comes through. But because they got the Stealth Rocks up, Glimora has less of a chance of beating the uh, Dragonite. So Alluring Voice comes through. Blaziken goes down. All good, though. Because we still have Aloma Mola in the back, which can definitely take a hit from this Espeon. It can take a hit from the uh, Dragonite as well and potentially burn it, which would be nice. So um, we'll keep that all around. And what we'll do now is we'll go into Raging Bolt because I know we can take a hit. So we're going to net game like so. We're going to go for the safe Thunderclap, um, but they didn't actually attack us. They've gone for something else. They've gone for a Calm Mind. So Calm Mind is fine, though. Calm Mind is fine. So Calm Mind comes through. This next turn, they're probably going to attack us. So I'll go for a Thunderclap this next turn, um, to be honest with you. So there they go. They go, they go ahead and get the leftovers recovery. And the thing is, the more they Calm Mind, the more... I'm going to try the Thunderclap again. I think they'll attack this time. They do. All right, awesome. So Thunderclap takes out the Espeon, which is awesome. I'm not falling for those Calm Mind, Sucker Punch, Thunderclap mind games. Not going to fall for it. As now we just have Dragonite to take care of with the Raging Bolt. And we can do that with a simple Dragon Pulse plus Thunderclap um, combination. So Dragonite comes in. Looking awesome. Um, I am going to go for the Dragon Pulse now. Dragon Pulse comes through. We do outspeed, of course. Um, and that's going to do half the Dragonite and watch the weakness policy. Oh my god. I called it as well. I called it. I, th I think the last time about Blitz that they used the weakness policy Dragonite, which is really good. And um, that's going to go ahead and Dragon Dance right now, which is really unfortunate for us. Pretty unfortunate to, for us. Um, so what we'll have to do here is I, I think we can live a hit, but we'll have to go for a Thunderclap regardless. So Thunderclap comes through. Nearly gets the job done. They go for an Outrage. Which is going to KO us. This Dragonite may be winning right now. Maybe winning them the game right now. Dragonite may be winning them the game right now. So uh, I, uh, my focus is going to break for bringing this in. But I'd rather have that in. Because this one this, this one has the most chance to... Look. No, you know what? We go into Aloma Mola here. And what we have to do is... We're going to have to get the Stealth Rock Chip, which is unfortunate. But we need to be at higher health. So we're going to sack off Glimora now. Uh, get that regenerator. And a Loma Molar at full, uh, nearly full health should be able to live in Outrage. Plus, they might get confused, which would be legendary if they do. Absolutely legendary if they do. So, obviously, the Stealth Rock breaks our Sash. They go for an Outrage. That's going to go ahead and take out Glimora because it's plus three. And then we get the Toxic Debris up, which is awesome. Not that, not really. They've got no Pokemon to switch into. Um, so, Petunia goes down. And now, we just have to go into a Loma Molar. Aloma and Melola. There we go. Like so. Stealth Rocks do dig in, which makes this a bit harder. But uh, I have to I have to go for a flip turn. I have to go for a flip turn because play rough can miss. They don't get confused either, which is annoying. And that takes us out. So Aloma Mola goes down to a plus three outrage. It was my only chance. My only chance was if they got confused after the second one. But oh well, GG Blitz, that was a pretty fun one. And now they get confused. Just to rub it in. Just to rub it in. They didn't have to show the animation because the battle's ended, but they did anyway just to rub it in. GG Blitzer.